Hey everyone, Caduce, co-founder of Informel here, bringing you this quick video on my instantly campaign settings and what I actually use, the proper settings, just so you know that you're launching your first campaign correctly. So obviously you already have your leads in here, everything else, we're just not gonna even get into that, right? You upload your lead list, all that should be fine and dandy. Now we're gonna go over to sequences and then you put your subject line over here, right? And then you have variations of your email right under it. So in this situation, I use a lot of spin tax. So as you can see, random, hey there, hello, greetings, hi, howdy, salutations, hola. All this does is when I preview the email, it's gonna change this right here over and over again and recycle it. And the reason why I do this is because it creates so many variations to your email to the point where in this situation now I have millions of variations. And so when it sends out, email service providers won't be blocking my email from going out by, because you know if you don't use any spin tax, it just completely hurts your deliverability super, super bad. It's already worse, you know, it's already bad that you're doing cold email, but it's just a lot worse when you're actually not even using spin tax. So spin tax helps you in a lot of different ways, okay? So right here on my schedule, I run the campaign from Monday to Sunday, because why not? I see there was some data that instantly produced that said on Saturday and Sunday, it's not the best time to send. Monday to Friday is always the best, but I just send Monday to Sunday because why not? And I send it from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I just leave it at that, and I click Save. And then on the Options section, I click all the accounts that I want to use. So in this situation, I put all of the accounts that I have warming up, right? So everything in my warm-up section is in here, and you could divide this. So if you have four different campaigns, for example, and you have 100 different email inboxes, you can segment it so 25 inboxes go to each campaign. Right, in this situation I have 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47 inboxes total for this campaign. So it's gonna be sending out a bunch of emails, you know, over a thousand for sure. So one thing is you obviously wanna leave your warm up and your campaign on. So at the same time, you don't wanna turn off warm up and send campaigns. That's just a bad idea because again, when you're sending emails and you only, you know, you're getting one to 5% reply rates, ESPs are gonna be like, well, this guy's obviously sending unsolicited emails. People are not even responding to his emails. Who is he emailing? So what you wanna do, is you wanna leave warm up on so you get a lot of replies coming in here through the automated software of Instantly or Smartly if you're using that. And then the other you know, half of the emails can be campaigns and even though it has a lower response rate, it won't flag you know, email service providers too much. So in this situation, I added all my email accounts, stop sending emails on the reply, enable, as soon as someone replies, I just wanna be able to control it from now. You know, I don't want them to keep receiving sequences. Open tracking, I enable this just to see you know, how many people open the email if I'm testing a different angle or something new, right? But for the most part, once you test something, you, you can disable this because technically open tracking is an extra pixel in your email that worsens your deliverability, right? So you wanna always optimize for deliverability at the end of the day. In this situation, I have enable for open tracking, which is not super bad, but you know it will still hurt the deliverability slightly, but it won't make or break you. Now, delivery optimization is a good way as well. So if you don't have open tracking, you can send emails as text only, no HTML. And what that does is it removes all links, remove, removes everything, so it actually even disables the open tracking, right? So in this situation, I wanna obviously leave open tracking on, but if you want delivery to be optimized, and you won't know how many people opened your you know, campaign, then you could just send emails as text only. So it really depends on you. I recommend if you're a beginner to go with open tracking and to enable that. And then after you get your campaigns going, then you can optimize for delivery. So the daily limit, this is a calculation that you're gonna wanna do. So right now, I wanna obviously you know, send 50 emails total from each inbox, okay? So I have, as we've discussed, 47 inboxes. And so 47 times 50, that's a total of 2,350 emails that I can send total. But remember, half of them are warm up. So if I divide this by two, 1,175 campaign emails are actually going to be going out. So therefore, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to 1,175 because I want the max number of emails to send per day for this campaign to be 1,175 just for this campaign. And then the other half, I know when, when warm up is on, my warm up will you know, be receiving emails and replying to emails. So I wanna you know, do this properly. 25, campaign, 25 warm up, And because of this, I know that 25 is gonna be on the warm up side. So technically 2,350 are still sending, but 1,175 are going to be my campaign emails. And 1,175 are gonna be my warm up emails. And then we're gonna go over to sh you know, uh, show your advanced options. Time gap between emails. You could honestly leave this to whatever you want. You can make this five between five and eight minutes, five and seven minutes, whatever it is. Max new leads. We're gonna put no limit. So basically, you know, this is what you prioritize to hit up. So if you wanna prioritize new leads, you could just put the max number of new leads you wanna hit up. In this situation, I wanna prioritize new leads. So I prioritize reaching out to new leads over scheduled follow-ups, okay? But in this, my specific situation, I have a thousand leads in the campaign and then a thousand one hundred seventy-five emails sending anyway. So basically, what that's going to do is I'm, it's, gonna, it's just going to be Monday first email, a thousand you know, a thousand emails are going to be sent out. Second day is going to be the, the second sequence of that thousand leads. So they're all going to get hit, and then by the end of the week, you'll be good to go. So if you have less inboxes, though, for example, if you can't send a thousand emails a day and you're only sending five hundred, but you have a thousand leads in there, then it's going to send five hundred on Monday, and then five hundred on, on the second day would be the new leads if you prioritize new leads in this situation. Okay, just a better. And then provider matching. This is new right here. So you know. Provider matching is also a really good thing because if you have Google Workspace or Informail or you know Outlook, etc., it'll actually only email depending on the provider. So if you were, you know, if your receiver is an Outlook and you have Outlook, then it will use your Outlook inbox to send to another Outlook email instead of emailing a Google Workspace because that, you know, increases the deliverability. 
Stop campaign for the company on reply. That's also a new thing that Instant Edit, which I really like, right? So if you wanna, you know, if they have automatic automatic out of office, you know, replies, then you can just enable company reply stop. Then you can just stop the campaign when they auto reply. And then you're good to go. So you just save and then you launch. And then once you launch, you're good to go. And that's your first campaign. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was concise and it made a little bit of sense. These are the settings I use. Also another, you know, just bonus tip, you have subsequences here. So if you get a positive reply, instead of typing out to every single person, you can add a subsequence. And so if someone, for example, if your call to action is, hey, may I send you over a two minute video? Then all you can do if they say you know yes, you can just put them in a subsequence and it'll send them the two minute video that you wanted to send them anyway, right? Instead of you just you know writing out this the same link over and over and over again, you can just put them in a subsequence, right? So that's just a bonus tip for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and peace out.